Well, hospitals around the country are doing what they can to prepare for an influx of coronavirus patients. There's another threat they're constantly batting, battling, so-called superbugs, which have killed thousands of people around the world. And as Stephanie Lydon tells us, getting drug manufacturers to step up and help has not been easy. Dad? Oh, my. In the Parenti family, it's usually Dad who does the cooking. But on this day, about six months after undergoing a heart transplant, Larry Parenti's not feeling great. You need a little cheese. His new heart's working fine. The day I woke up after transplant, I, I could have run a marathon. I, I felt so good. What slowed him down is an infection. I personally know a gentleman that never got out of bed after surgery. He just literally got an infection and was gone within a week. Doctors here at Tufts Medical Center have already given Parenti one round of antibiotics. We never want to see a patient who should be running marathons, as Larry would say, slowed down by an infection or worse, right? We don't want to lose our patients to infections. But Helen Boucher, chief of infectious diseases at Tufts, has limited options because most antibiotics are decades old. and The bacteria they're designed to fight constantly evolve. The result? antibiotic-resistant bacteria, or superbugs. Each year in the U.S. alone, superbugs cause close to 3 million infections and 48,000 deaths. And this is sort of the situation that none of us wanted to be in. But for the past sort of 10 to 15 years, we've reached really a crisis of antibiotic resistance in our country. Unlike the coronavirus, doctors have seen the antibiotic resistance crisis coming for years. And scientists have responded. In the last 10 years, 16 new antibiotics won Food and Drug Administration approval. The problem, there's no money in antibiotics. Companies that made four of those new antibiotics went bankrupt. That's been the the craziest part is that normally any other drug, FDA approval, you pop the champagne cork and, and you start making money. Kevin Otterson runs the nonprofit Carbex here on the campus of Boston University. It provides millions to companies researching antibiotics. We can see drugs becoming ineffective that used to work. Uh, But it's not the sort of crisis like Zika or Ebola or, or coronavirus that suddenly appears and captures everyone's imagination. Antibiotics are unique. Unlike cancer drugs or even a daily cholesterol pill, antibiotics are generally short term. The less antibiotics are used, the longer they remain effective. So doctors prescribe them sparingly. It's a great idea for public health. It's a great idea for medicine. But, you know, it's a disaster for the company. And although antibiotics can't treat the coronavirus, Otterson points out that a century ago, during the Spanish flu pandemic, most of the deaths were caused not from the virus, but a secondary bacterial infection. And today, Larry Parente, who's benefited from extraordinary advances in medicine, needs an effective antibiotic to take advantage of the generosity of an organ donor named Joshua. Every time somebody say, how's your new heart? I'll always say, oh, Josh is doing good. You know, so, so I think about him all the time. Stephanie Lydon joins me now. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, so is you. mostly people like Larry Parente who were suffering because of these superbugs or no? Well, as we've learned with the coronavirus, people with these underlying conditions are always the most vulnerable. But the thing that doctors emphasize is we're all vulnerable because as these superbugs continue to mutate and antibiotics become ineffective, eventually they'll stop working. Common surgeries like a mm-hmm. knee replacement becomes an extremely dangerous proposition. You, you made a connection, uh, inadvertent or otherwise, to what we're, I think, we're suffering through. Now, you mentioned that 100 years ago during the Spanish flu, uh, that it wasn't the flu virus that caused deaths, it was bacterial infections, which got me to thinking, is there concern that people sickened by the coronavirus will also be at risk of bacterial infections and thus be prey to these superbugs? It's, it's an open question. There is, to be clear, there is no evidence right now that the coronavirus is turning also into a bacterial infection in the lungs, which is what happened during the pandemic in the early part of the 1900s. Uh, but, you know, viruses sometimes do get into lungs, sometimes do become a bacterial problem. So that's just a, one of these overriding concerns. So if drug companies say they can't make money from making new uh, antibiotics, 
Then what? What happens? Is it the government steps in, theoretically, or what? Theoretically. And there is legislation in Congress. It would pay hospitals more if they use these newer antibiotics rather than relying on the older, sometimes less effective ones. So the drug makers, most of whom are very small companies at this point, mm -hmm. the big pharmaceuticals have gotten out of antibiotics, mm -hmm. they think that would offer some relief. But there really is a call for more, probably, government intervention worldwide to come up with a way to reimburse, not based on the number of antibiotics that are used, mm -hmm. but on the needs, kind of like the way we pay the fire department. Healthcare woes everywhere. Turn yeah, Stephanie, absolutely. thanks so much. Appreciate it.